Hey everybody, thanks for watching A Guy Doing Stuff. I'm Adam, and today I'm going to be cutting a channel for the binding. All acoustic guitars have a thin strip of binding that go around the edge of the body. Before I install this binding, I have to cut a channel for it. Now, you guys know how much work I've put into this thing so far. It would just be a real shame if I mess something up at this point. So from here on out, I'm gonna be extra, extra careful with every little thing I do on this, especially cutting this channel, because it's gotta be really, really precise. The first step for this is to get the back flush with the sides. I already trimmed the hang off on the bandsaw to a quarter of an inch, and then I took it down even a little bit closer with a chisel. I'm gonna get it the rest of the way on the router table with a flush trim router bit. I made this little circle to represent the router bit to help explain the trimming process. The bit is gonna be spinning like this with the blade cutting in this direction. The grain on the back is going along the length of the guitar. The ideal cut is gonna be going downhill like this because the bit is gonna be cutting like this in this direction and there's very little chance to tear out because you're cutting with the grain. I'm gonna mark these parts where the easy cuts are and I'll make those first to get them out of the way. The problem starts when you have to go uphill because if the bit is making cuts like this, it can catch against the grain and break the wood. When you're making these cuts, there's a really high probability of tear out, so when you do have to make them, I'm gonna go really slow and I'm actually gonna feed it backwards. So instead of moving in this direction like this, I'm gonna be moving in this direction because I think that helps reduce the chance of tear out a little bit too. Again, I'm gonna make the downhill cuts first. I say a little prayer before I turn on the router, then slowly and carefully make the cuts. So far so good, I just got all the easy cuts out of the way. Now even more slowly and more carefully, I'm gonna make all the uphill cuts. Sweet, that went really well. Now I'm gonna do the same process for the soundboard. Okay, the back and the soundboard are now flush to the sides. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually cut the channel. There are several ways to do this. I'm gonna be using a Dremel and some attachments that Stumac makes. First, I attach the precision router base that I used in the rosette video. Then I attach this precision edge guide. The base will sit on the surface of the back and this bearing will ride against the side. You can adjust the height of the cut up and down with the router base and there's a little screw adjuster thing here that you can increase or decrease the depth with. I practice on a piece of scrap wood to make sure the height of the cut is the exact measurement I want. I'm going to take a couple light passes, increasing the depth every time. So for this first cut, I'm only going to go about a 30 second of an inch deep. The same principles from the router trim bit apply to these cuts. I'll do the downhill cuts first, then carefully finish with the uphill cuts. That first pass was good. Now I'll increase the depth little by little until it fits my binding exactly. I'm shooting for about 0 0.09 inches. So a couple things before I finish this video. I didn't talk about the bit. The bit in here is specially made by Stumac specifically for cutting binding channels. It's really expensive and really, really nice, and I wouldn't use any other Dremel bit um, to cut that. The other thing is the, the base sits at a right angle to how it's cutting, and as you guys know, there's a radius on the back of my top, so this is exaggerated, but it's kind of cutting like this, so there's some weird angles, especially at the upper bout right here. It didn't cut as deep as I wanted it to, so I'll come back and clean around the channel with um, a little stick of wood with some sandpaper backing. I do need to cut the channel for the soundboard too, but I'm not gonna do that right now because the installation process for the binding 
can mess up the unbinded channel. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and make the video for the binding insulation process, and then after the I get the back binding on, I'll cut the channel for the soundboard binding. I'll be posting that video here in a couple weeks. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Worksharp Tools for sponsoring this series, and don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date on my videos. Thank you.